goes out there and scouts. Second Corsair already on the way. Uh, no Scourge up in the air to really stop this Corsair. It, sh it should be pretty rudimentary, though, just to produce two Scourge. And now it looks like going to be taking that... Um, that upper 3 o'clock location, so about that 2 o'clock location to get an expansion there. Still the Hydralisk is very slow, Lurker's on the way in, and slow Zealot's starting to run out into the field. Uh, Hydralisk should be able to micro against them uh, fairly decently. It looks like a couple of them getting trapped in, uh, and that Overlord going to get taken out as well. More Hydralisk coming to support, he just needs to micro them a little bit, and they're just, it looks like he's just going to shove them off the front line, get about one or two Hydralisk kills, then back off. Still mining just with single probe on that gas, armor upgrade uh, nearly finished. So it might be thinking about a front door uh, bust, but it looks like it's just kind of a Zealot Corsair build at this stage, but with no second gateway. And a big, uh, big mineral bonus here. doesn't have a lot of production buildings to really produce a lot of units with. looks like a Citadel of Adun being built now. Uh, it looks like Burrow, of all things, being upgraded here on the edge. Maybe perhaps to burrow these Zerglings uh, across the map to make sure that additional expansions can't be taken. Corsair now running up to this upper right-hand base just to scout it out. Hive already on the way, a couple Scourge out to take care of that Corsair. Unfortunately, that Corsair already going to get the scouting information. Looks like Speed also upgrading. And a couple Lurkers now, and these Lurkers, once they establish position on that ramp, they can be uh, really powerful, really devastating. Corsair taking one hit, able to dodge around, is going to be able to, yeah, once again, getting that scouting information. Very nice drone saturation there on the secondary. Uh, looks like the Overlords are Speed upgraded, so this Corsair isn't really going to be able to get any kills. But critically, seeing that Hive being upgraded, um, so let's see if there's going to be some aggression. No robotics facility to really scout this out. It looks like two zealots wandering out. They don't have that speed upgrade um, yet. But uh, yeah, let's see if this causes Conrad to be a little bit more aggressive. He's just managing to get two zealots up in here. Um, looks like the Hydralis is already going to be on top of that to take those zealots out. That creep colony really not necessary. Um, and just going to do a little bit of damage. And it looks like that's going to allow the rest of the zealots to kind of wander out. So a big attack actually pushing in. Honestly, between these Hydralisks and these creep colonies, that should be enough for Agony. And Agony getting a little bit greedy now. It looks like he's going to put down some more uh, more hatcheries and a couple lurkers getting backed off here as well. No detection, but the zealots can just wander. Uh, they can run right by them. They can just ignore it. Oh, taking a lot of hits and ah, oh, that was four zealot kills right there. Two between each lurker. Now they're getting pinned in and completely wiped out. Uh, gonna have to run away, but yeah, not not very successful run by attack there at all. Uh, that's really why you need speed or something along those lines. It looks like he's going to come back to home base. Still that single probe on gas. Weapons 1 now being upgraded. Um, the armor 1 really not helping out in that situation, particularly against the lurkers who do uh, really that splash damage is just critical. Finally, that spine's range upgrade going for those hydrolytical guys. So it looks like some drones going to be transferred to this uh, 2 o'clock base. And now additional gateways being put down and a robotics facility as well. This is quite a bit later than I was expecting. You can see a lot of minerals in the base. He's been mining out of two bases for quite some time and not really uh, producing a lot of the units to kind of uh, support that. More lurkers being produced, and I've really, I really got to give a huge advantage to Agony here. He's got four bases versus two, first of all. He's got a lot of troops on the ground. He's already got Carapace 1. He should have more upgrades coming along the way. Um, and he's at Hive Tech, and he's going to have the gas to support it. Uh, and really, before where I thought he was going to go for a uh, kind of that Ling Defiler build, because he was just sticking at the three hatcheries, it looks like now he can basically do anything, because he's going to have four gas. And four gas Zerg has essentially that entire tech tree open up to them. I'll just zel more zealots and more zealots being produced on the front door. This is not a very effective unit combination against anything, only against Lings really in the mid game. And now a second gateway being produced uh, looks like. And just, um, yeah, you can see he's just kind of hurting for gas, uh, trying to produce what he can in the meantime with the zealots. But it looks like it's going to be a Corsair, a Corsair zealot combination. And Lurkers are a pretty good counter to that. So it uh, looks like those Lurkers are really going to be effective into the mid-game for Agony. And the Hydralisk is also uh, very effective against this build. Usually you want to kind of catch this um, with a Ling, early Ling kind of build, and maybe just overwhelm uh, quickly before your Zerg opponent can really get a lot of Lurkers out in your front door, or even a lot of Hydralisks out in the field. Uh, it coming so late from Comrade, he's going to have a hard time executing this. Looks like just a couple of Corsairs wandering out there to try to pick off a couple of Overlords. He does have that Observer out in the field. Needs to be very careful with it, though, because uh, that happens right there. And this is, again, yeah, just the absolute bread and butter for Zerg players on this map. Um, looks like more drones being transferred. Actually, it looks like that last set of drones transferred to the 10 o'clock position here. 
couple Corsairs able to wander out um, and just kind of check the saturation, getting hit by spore colonies and uh, that spore colony in the meantime. They are going to be able to gather up and maybe take out these four overlords. They are speed upgraded, so they could wander back into the main and get some uh, Hydralis support, but I think at least one of them uh, will be killed. A single Mule is being produced, and there's that Ultralis Cavern already out. Um, and now, yeah, those Corsairs, not long for life, because uh, Hydralis is already attacking underneath a single, uh, looks like a single Hydralisk, I'm sorry, a single Mulisk up in the air. Um, I, I assume for scouting here. <laughs> He's going to have to run for his life. Usually that's not a situation you see a Corsair running away from a Mutalisk. Uh, Spire up, yeah, double upgrades. We do have the Defiler Den, so it's the full gambit of tech except for the Greater Spire. Um, on Agony's part, and I assume he's just going to start building, pumping Ultralisks into the mid-game, looking almost supply-locked here. Of course, there's having to run back home, and really, this is a terrible situation for Comrade. He's locked just to a single base. Uh, he's really going to have a hard time breaking out. More Zerglings running up to support, and he's completely contained. This is a huge army to his exterior. If he's going to expand, he'd have to expand back here. It looks like two Hydralisks already waiting back here, just in case a probe's heading out that direction. And now, yeah, just going to take more expansions um, and be greedy like he can afford to be. He's got a, a much superior troop count. You can see 106 versus 99. Well, not that superior troop count, but he's got uh, the production ability is just uh, immeasurably better. Just because the amount of troops, a lot of his orders is being produced. Only four gateways down. Looks like more pylons being placed. But yeah, four gateways versus five hatcheries is not the production place you want to really be at. He is, oh, going to be able to sneak this nexus here. Has no real way to defend it. So he's going to hope that pylon can go up and he can just place a ton of cannons. Hydro's now gathering up the, over that secondary. And really the thing that's missing out of this army is high Templar. There are no high Templar really to mix up. I don't even see uh, Templar archives uh, built around the map. So, and really that's what you need to be successful as Protoss against Zerg period in the mid game. But particularly on this map, uh, lurkers on the opposite end <clears throat> really going to make uh, containing him uh, successful. And let's see if it's just going to come down to starvation <clears throat> or just kind of if he's going <laughs> to, yeah, and there's the burrow coming into effect. The observer is still going to see the burrow though. At the very least, he is going to be able to get this expansion up. He's going to be able to place a couple cannons there. He's going to need to place more cannons than that. Zerglings wandering. They're going to come across this space right now before those cannons warp in. Absolutely devastating for Comrade. So, <clears throat> going to have to cancel all of this. Going to end up losing it, and the Corsair is going to wander off now. But as you can see, and now trying to break out, but no detection. Didn't have his observers alongside, so those zealots are going to melt to those lurkers. And just a couple dragoons. Um, and it looks like, yeah, he's engaging uh, in a really bad situation. That's going to completely drain this attack force. Only only three dragoons left, uh, two observers overhead. I don't see that overlord um, pushing up. Now that overlord pushing up, and all those observers killed. Now let's see. Yeah, agony feels it now. He's like, okay, just wiped out that attack force. Let me push down into that secondary. And comrade has nothing to hold this attack back. Absolutely nothing. These cannons not lasting very long at all. Um, looks like he's behind. Well, he's not behind on upgrades. He does have a <clears throat> weapons one and armor one. <clears throat> but gonna, completely behind in troop count, as you can see, 139 versus 57. That should be GG right here. Ultralisk swandering in as well. So just really, uh, Comrade getting contained early, a little bit off uh, on his build altogether, and Agony really capitalizing on it, expanding all over the map, able to run and take over everything. And it looks like Harvard is going to be down against Princeton early. Princeton going up 1-0. We'll move on to game two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.